What's up, everybody? I'm Shantavia Johnson, and this is another episode of The Shantavia Show, where I want to inspire you to build a brand, business, and life that you love. It's Thursday, y'all, and you know what I like to do on Thursday. I'd love to hear from you with questions about building your personal brand and reputation, starting businesses, or figuring out how to connect all of your expertise to the work that you want to do now or in the future. If you have a question that you'd like to hear hear from me about, reach out to me at askshantavia at gmail.com. That's A-S-K-S-H-O-N-T-A-V-I-A at gmail.com. So I'm excited to have Nicole Hayden here with me today. I got an awesome question from a new lawyer, a lawyer who's just starting at a law firm, and she has a question about being in the firm. And I thought since Nicole was here with me interviewing uh, for a different episode that we could spend a little time answering this question together. Nicole Hayden is a partner at Nelson Mullins Riley and Scarborough, where she practices intellectual property law. Nicole and I worked at the same law firm about what how many years how many years I don't at know. least 10 I don't know 10 or 15 yeah. some years ago I used to look at Nicole and think wow she's a phenomenal lawyer and here I am struggling my way through so I'm excited that she's here to help answer this question because I don't know that I was that great of a new associate but Nicole was you were a phenomenal example thank so, you you are being too you. hard on yourself but yes <laughs> thank you well Anyway, we're going to answer, well, Nicole is going to help me answer this question because this is advice I probably could have used back 10 or 15 years ago, whatever it was. All right, so good afternoon. I hope my email finds you well. I've been following you on social media and subscribed to the Shantavia Show on iTunes and thought I would reach out. It is so good to listen to, and I get such great advice. I just joined a bigger law firm in the Midwest working in the IP field, mostly patent prosecution. I was just wondering two questions. Number one, how important is it to build a brand or a reputation as an associate? And then number two, how to go about doing that and standing out in a law firm setting? Thank you so much. And I don't know if this person wants me to use her name or not, so I'll give her a fake name. Rachel. So let's talk to Rachel about being a new lawyer in a new firm. And obviously this will translate to lots of different industries. Right. But what do you think about that, building a reputation as so a new important. associate? So important. There's, I mean, there's nothing more important for your career. Um, and I think first impressions mean a lot. And I don't mean the first time you meet somebody, but you know, <clears throat> the first part of your career mm-hmm. can set the tone for your career. Um, mm-hmm. And so I think... Why do you think that is? Can you explore that a little? Why do you think that impression sets the tone for your career? I do. I just think it's human nature a little bit. I think when somebody has a really good experience with you right from the outset, they're willing to invest in you and they're willing to continue to bring you up with them. Um, and in, um, on the same tone, if they, you know, have a bad experience with you, they, they may not be willing to invest mm-hmm. as much time. So I, I think from a progression standpoint, it's important. Um, yeah. And I also think from a long term standpoint, marketing, like you want to have your colleagues, you know, we were colleagues mm-hmm. and look at how many times our paths have crossed in, That's the, right. in the interim. So you want your colleagues to have a good impression of you right from the start because you don't know where they're going to end up in life. And, and those colleagues may present opportunities like this where you're interviewing for a podcast <laughs> or they may become your clients. Yeah. Uh, you just don't know. You never really know. No, I love that point. And that's why I wanted to stop there because the world is so small mm-hmm. and the legal community. I mean, I don't care how many lawyers there are in America. It feels like within three steps, I could probably connect with just about anybody. So even like with Nicole, Nicole and I started working, well, I started working at the same firm as Nicole when I was a new associate. And she was the graduate of a law school that two years later I would be interviewing for a job at and ended up getting that job in part because of your recommendation. So thank you Mm -hmm. 15 Mm -hmm. years later (laughs) for that. And it just really, you just never know know, when paths will cross. I've been all around the country and frankly the planet and there's always some random connection you know that gets made so it is important to start as a new associate in a firm or a new employee wherever building that brand building that reputation right right Right. so how do you suggest Rachel do this in a law firm environment 
what can she do? Yeah, I think um, I think you want to be the, the one that's dependable, right? The one that you're gonna develop, you're gonna create the work product that is you know good work product, but you're gonna deliver it on time. Um, you're gonna be consistent. You're gonna you're gonna be available, but I'm not saying like sacrifice your personal life for availability, but but that you're 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 going to be able to be the dependable one, and and that's what you know as a partner now I look for is somebody that can turn something in on time, that's going to do a good job substantively, and that I can depend on not only to do the work, but also to take visiting to, to visit a client, to put mm-hmm. in front of a client, to have a conversation with a client that's professional and appropriate and, mm-hmm. and that sort of thing. So. So, so can I ask you a couple things about that? Mm-hmm. So you mentioned being dependable, turning things in on time. What happens if you get yourself in a position where maybe you can't turn something in on time or where you do make a mistake or two? How can a, a new person in a firm or wherever, but in particularly a firm for Rachel here, what can she do or what should young associates do? In that instance, be honest up front, right. that kind of thing. What yes, do you think? communication. Cannot underemphasize communication. The worst is to have a deadline and then not hear from that associate, and that deadline comes and goes. If you're not going to make the deadline, communicate. Communicate yeah. why, what's going on. This is taking longer than it should have. I ran into an issue that I didn't realize was going to be there. It's understandable. Like, you know, the deadlines in some cases are meldable, you mm-hmm. know? Um, so it's understandable sometimes if you're not going to meet a deadline, but communicate. Just yeah. communicate. It's easy. Yeah. Especially with IP patent prosecution, because you live and die by the deadlines, mm-hmm. right? Mm-hmm. So it's important to hear from a person about those things. Other yeah. suggestions? When well, you're a new associate, how you can start to build the right kind of reputation or stand out? Yeah. Um, for for long term, I say, you know, make connections with your colleagues, with not just your colleagues in your law firm, with some, you know, if, if you've got minority groups you can get involved with, women's groups you can get involved with, mm-hmm. um, any sort of uh, practice group uh, groups that you can get involved with, you know, IP lawyers or maybe just a certain technology group that, you know, mm-hmm. uh, that is focused on tech, women in technology or something along those lines. Those are the people that when you make those connections, they're going to spread out all over the mm-hmm. world. And mm-hmm. that's and that's going to be and and stick with it. Right. Stick with those connections. Follow up with people every once in a while. Keep in touch with your college friends. Keep in touch with your law school friends. Those mm-hmm. connections last really smart. forever. Very smart. I yeah. needed that advice. <laughs> <laughs> hard advice, I mean, because that takes a lot That's of time, hard, too. Yeah, but, yeah, yeah, it is. And social media kind of makes you feel like, oh, I don't need to do that. But you do. That mm-hmm. is really quite important. Mm-hmm. How can new associates network within a firm? Like, do you go around and knock on everybody's door and introduce yourself? Do you go to all the networking opportunities outside of work? You mentioned, like, not sacrificing your personal life, but law firms are notorious for asking you sometimes to sacrifice your personal life. So how do you balance the do really good work versus the building relationships with your colleagues internally? Yeah, and I think some of that is based on the type of work that you do. I mean, you can build a reputation based on your work product without mm-hmm. ever going to a social event. And and that works for some people. Um, for other people, going to those social events is where they build their reputation, and, and that works for some people as well. I mean, if you can balance them both, mm-hmm. then great. Um, but there are a lot of lawyers that are really good on the marketing end, and they focus on the marketing end, and, and that's sort of their, they draw the work in and mm-hmm. find other people to do the work, and, and that works in a certain model, um, you know, and it, it completely depends on your personal situation. I think I was very traditional, went to law school right after college, you know, early in my career, I had the time to do all of those social things, right? Mm-hmm. I, had the, I had the time to go to every charity event and to sit at every table that the firm sponsored and that sort of thing. Now it's a little bit more difficult because of, you know, kids and life and mm-hmm. sports and all of that stuff. So. I think accepting that your your career path is going to kind of move in waves, at least for, for me it has, and mm-hmm. I think for a lot of women it does. Um, you're not necessarily always going to be on a straight upward trajectory, mm-hmm. but as long as you're sort of continuing on the path and, and understanding that that path yeah. is going to be variable. 
No, I love that. All right. So if you are comfortable answering this question, so you mentioned your trajectory looking. Yeah. I'm doing this for the podcast listeners. I'm moving my, <laughs> my hands up and down. What was your trajectory? What did your path look like? And yeah. how did you keep a great brand and reputation doing that? Right. So um, when I had my first child, I was in my fourth year, I think. And at that point in time, I took a step back and went to 85%. My law firm allowed us to do certain percentages. And so I was basically still working full time. I was still doing, you know, close to 40 hours a week, but I didn't have to do nights and weekends. And I got to do the home stuff that I wanted to do and have time Mm -hmm. for exercise and personal life and, and, and that sort of thing. Um, and then when I went in-house, I was back to full-time. So I was, I was back on another because I felt like that was a, like there was no option to do a reduced schedule when you're in-house. You're, mm-hmm. you're in or you're out. Um, in-house at a tech startup. Yeah, okay. right. And so, um, but it was so exciting and it was so fun and it was, it was so different. And I was getting so many new challenges thrown at me. Um, and so that was sort of like a little bit of an uphill. And then when I came out of that, I came back into the law firm and I went even more reduced than I was before. So I went down to 75% and um, and I kind of stayed at 75% and, and then just made partner this year. So it's, it's a lot of up and down, but you just kind of have to go with what works for you and your family. And, mm-hmm. you know, this whole work-life balance concept is, um, is difficult to figure out. It's difficult to achieve, but I think some of it is just being able to turn off when it's time to turn off, Mm -hmm. right? Mentally, like at the end of the day, whatever that end of the day is, whether that's five o'clock or three o'clock or eight o'clock, being able to actually turn off and focus on the people Mm -hmm. around you, um, the people that you're supposed to be with at that point in time. Yeah. I think that's just part Mm -hmm. of the important part. Yeah. Great advice, but you maintained a good reputation even yeah, with yeah, all of that that's by doing thing. good work. Right. Like I mean, I don't point. think, yeah, as long as you're engaged, as long as you're, you know, present and there and available for, you know, and, and I, I'm i pretty good about being available during the hours I'm available, but people also know that there are certain hours that I'm not available. Mm-hmm. And, um, and, and they sort of accept that, and I'll get back to them as soon as I can, but not at the sacrifice of, yeah, you know, everything else. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So do you think that's ever hurt you, the not being available at midnight or 2 a.m. or whatever? Has that ever had a negative impact on your work or your career trajectory? I am sure that it has on a micro level, but not on a level that I felt. So I am sure that there are um, some people that maybe wouldn't want to work with me because I'm not available at 9 o'clock at night, um, and that's okay because... There are, a lot of people, right. there are a lot of people that do. So, right. yeah. So. And do you want to always be available at nine right. o'clock at night? I don't. Right. No, that's awesome. And I also think that's good advice for a young woman starting in a mid sized or bigger law firm because mm-hmm. the brand that you create is the, I mean, that is what you'll have to maintain, mm-hmm. right? And so if you're available at 2 a.m., then you consistently probably will be available at 2 a.m. Right. And that's not a sustainable model for a lot of people. And it's difficult to change that once you've created that mm-hmm. that situation. Um, it's difficult to step back and say, hey, I'm no longer going to be available at 2 a.m. Mm-hmm. when you've been available at 2 a.m. for the last two years. Mm-hmm. So do you have any other advice for like a new associate just starting in a mid-sized, a larger firm? Are there other things this person should be doing or could be doing, going out and seeking work or or any other things as this person is figuring out how to build a brand internally, how to create the right reputation? You know, there may be things market-based. You know, she said she's in the Midwest, so I don't know if she's in a big town or Mm -hmm. or a small town or a big city or Mm -hmm. what what the case may be or if it's even a woman. I don't even know that. Um, But you did say her name was Rachel. (laughs) Yeah, her name is Rachel. She is a woman. But um, (laughs) Her and not her fake name. Yeah, so I think it depends on the size of the market. So if you're in a really big market – getting out and like going knocking on doors to get business at at that stage of your career is probably not going to happen. I think you got to look at the 10 year plan, not the two year plan Mm -hmm. when you're starting out and Mm -hmm. and building those relationships with your contemporaries that are going to eventually be the decision makers is the important part. Oh, 
building relationships with your contemporaries who will ultimately be the decision makers. That is great advice. <laughs> Thank you for that, Nicole. That is a good note to end on unless you had other know, insights you wanted to Thanks. share. All right, you guys, thank you so much for listening. I hope, Rachel, that this advice, this advice helped you and resonated with you as you start your career at your law firm. For everybody else, I hope you can take some of these lessons and translate them into whatever field, industry, or place you are in. If you have additional comments or questions, if you agree or disagree, please reach out to me at askshantavia at gmail.com. I look forward to hearing from you. Thanks so much. All right.